Good morning, David. Good morning, Salim. David, this is the most important question to us as an academic institution, Sultan Qaboos University. So we'd like to, to hear your opinion uh, on the following. What are the most important topics to be included in an effective risk management academic degree? Well, now, this is me advising another expert. And so clearly, you know, you are the experts in the field. Please, and so, uh, I'm sure we can learn a lot from uh, your experience. I'm just a humble practitioner. So Thank I can you. offer you my perspective as Please. a practitioner. What, the point is, what do you want to come out from the other end of your degree? Mm -hmm. Do you want somebody who has great theoretical knowledge, doesn't know how to do anything? Mm -hmm. Do you want somebody who knows all of the, the theories and the, all of the mathematical models but has never dealt with a real person or a real project, all he deals with is computers. Those are a particular type of specialist. Yes. Now, there are specialists whose role is thinking or whose role is, is analysis. And so what is the purpose of your degree? Is it to actually produce well-rounded risk professionals or to train people in a particular branch of the discipline? And, and clearly, as with all things, you have to set your objectives first. But in, in general terms, I would just give you four headings mm -hmm. and four headings that all start with the letter P. Mm -hmm. So the things that any person coming from a higher education institution mm -hmm. who's studying risk management, they must know the principles of risk. What is a risk and what is not a risk? What is the relationship with uncertainty? How do you scope uncertainty and where does uncertainty come from? Why does uncertainty matter? What is the relationship between risk, uncertainty, threats and opportunities? Mm -hmm. What is the relationship between risks and issues and problems, constraints, requirements, those other things that are around risk? So those key principles, and we discussed some of those right at the very beginning yep. of our 100 questions video series. So principles must form part of, the, of a risk uh, degree course. Um, and so we're, we're setting the foundation. I think it is helpful to talk about process. A process, again, it depends on the level of the, of the course. If we're talking about a doctorate, it's, it's quite different. Yes. But as an undergraduate course, yes. you need to know the steps to take. You remember we've talked lots of times about seven questions. Yes. Whether you use the seven questions or something else to explain to, to students the steps you need to go through to understand what the risk is, to prioritize its level of importance, to de develop effective responses that you can implement to manage the risk, that you can communicate risk to other people in a way that's meaningful to them, and you can keep it up to date through the use of, of various techniques. So I think you must talk about process, the steps in the process, the framework for the process, and some of the key tools. And those ideas that tools look backwards and in the present and in the future, that we have individual tools and group tools, mm. we have creativity tools and uh, analytical tools. They need to be aware of the classes of tools that are available, yeah. not necessarily specifically training them how to do a particular technique mm -hmm. or how to use a one special software package, but the ideas of what's available. Mm -hmm. Because when they come into the real world, they're going to have to follow a process and use tools and techniques. And it may be that they join an organization where there's already a process and already a suite of tools and techniques, and they need to learn how to use those and maybe show people how to improve them. So principles and process are clearly important. The third major topic area is people. Mm -hmm. The whole thing that we've talked about in a block of these videos is why mm -hmm. people are important. Yes. So I think even at undergraduate level, we need to, to talk about psychology, yes. about the the, the base drives of humanity, mm -hmm. about uh, Maslow's theory of motivation, for example, or Hertzberg, yes. mm -hmm. um, some of those, those, those key sort of drivers, about sources of bias, yes. the, the work of um, Kahneman and Tversky yes. uh, and uh, Slovich, some of those key thinkers in prospect theory and so on. Um, sources of bias and how to deal with them, facilitation mm -hmm. skills, how to engage people, interpersonal skills, communication skills, motivation skills. Yes. All of those people sides of things, they must, be, I would say, be well grounded. And, and that is often the weakest part of any academic degree. People focus on the theories and on the processes and tools and techniques, and they don't talk about people. Yes. So with three Ps, we've got uh, principles, process, people. people. And the last is practicalities, mm -hmm. practical application. 
So talking about how do you engage people and how do you actually spend time running a workshop or generating a report? Uh, how do you um, uh, present your, your results to senior stakeholders in a way that they understand and, and will take away attention and action? They know what to do and then they'll do it. Um, all of those practicalities of, of actually doing it in, in the real world. I think some aspect of um, translating from the classroom to the workplace mm -hmm. should be part of a, um, a, an academic degree. Yes. And maybe in that part you bring in people from industry yeah. Yeah. and from organisations and from charities and from government bodies yeah. and from, you know... That interaction is very important. And then you talk, they talk to the students about what they need from students when they come out. And of yes. course we need head knowledge of the principles. Yes. We need people who understand w how to run the process. Yes. We need risk specialists who will um, understand and work well with people. Yes. But we have to have people who can work, who can yes. do the job. Yes. And that practicality uh, often, and I, this is no criti criticism of you or your colleagues, but often yes. academics are not very good at practical application. Yes. They spent so long in the classroom and, and the academic environment yes. that they're not exposed to the yes. real world of industry. Yes. And, uh, and they don't help their students, so yes. when they come out, they're not prepared yes. for the real world. Yes. Uh, we have talked about attributes of uh, these students when they graduate, mm. and we have talked about uh, some topics you have mentioned just now. What about courses? Imagine, for example, with many universities, they do have classical courses. Yes, of course. Psychology, mathematics, uh, statistics, probability, yes. and other courses. Let us just, based on your experience, what are the courses do you think you might suggest, okay, this course should be considered in that degree? Well, I'm not going to do your job for you in terms yes. of uh, building a course <laughs> at Sultan Qaboos University. Yes. Um, <clears throat> but I, I think it does depend on, as I say, the outputs that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so what kind of students or, or graduates do you wish to yes. produce? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean... <sighs> It's, it's very variable, there are so many things out there. Yes. I think as we talk about the four big headings of principles, process, people and practice, yes. that the, it's then how do you implement those, what's the next level of detail? Yes. Yes. So what principles, and we've yes. talked about uncertainty and risk, yes. about threat and opportunity, those kinds yes. of things, yes. previous theories, Bayes' yes. theorem and so on. Yes. Um, when we talk about process, I think to talk through the key standards, yes. so how is the process presented in ISO 31000, yes. for example, yes risk management principles and, and uh, gui principles and guidelines. Um, you know, these sorts of detailed things, uh, different types of processes that work in the oil and gas sector, in the IT sector, mm. in the creative sector, mm. in, in um, construction, mm. yes. there are different processes mm. applied and the yes. tools that are appropriate. Yes. So you would have a, a kind of domain specific yes. set of courses yes. there. Yes. Uh, the people, as you say, psychology, interactions, yes. motivation, leadership, facilitation, yes. these could all be their own individual courses. Yes. You see, this really reminds me of uh, nanotechnology field. Mm -hmm. Nanotechnology is a multidisciplinary uh, yes. field. So you'll get people from different backgrounds, biologists, chemists, physicists, even business. Yes. Uh, it seems to me that risk management, if you have to have a solid degree yes. of risk management, you need to consider that multidisciplinary uh, uh, nature yes. of the field to be reflected in these courses. Yes, but yes. we've talked about in an earlier question, what can risk management learn from science yes. or what can risk management learn from nature? Yes. And in both of those cases, we said we need to apply a filter to tailor yes. basic scientific process and of discovery and experimentation, for example, into the risk world. We need to take the behavior of animals and, and birds and insects and use it as an analogy to reflect yes. and learn new things about the world of risk management. Yes. And so if you have just professors from other disciplines coming in and just speaking about their discipline without that application to say, well, this is the philosophy of, of uncertainty. Okay, very interesting. How does that help me understand risk? Here is um, uh, sort of basic courses in statistical analysis. Okay, but how do I use that exactly. when I'm using a simulation of uncertainty? Yes. You know, here is a course in basic human psychology okay, I'm faced with a group of engineers, I have to yes. facilitate a workshop. Yes. How does that help me? Yes. And so that's why these topics of, you know, uh, principles, process, people, and practice are important. So each of those components, it may be presented initially by a professor from another department, yes. 
it needs that kind of translation element at the end. To those four Ps. Exactly, to say, here is the expertise in psychology or in commerce or in financial understanding or in analysis, mm -hmm. uh, statistical analysis. This is how we use it in the world of risk. Mm -hmm. And that final translation piece is often missing. So you can't just drop a professor of psychology in mm -hmm. and then let them come and say their thing and leave. Someone has to translate that for the students because they won't have the skills to do that. In fact, this is our approach at Sultan Qaboos University. When we want to uh, come up with a new degree program, we start thinking about the objectives of and course. what will be the attribute and what, what exactly we want from these students to learn. <coughs> and uh, then from there we'll be deciding the content of this uh, program uh, or a degree program, which courses should be included and which ones should not be included. Yes. Thank you very much. Dave. It's a pleasure.